this out and it is a, a passage that brings a warning to us and um, warnings are good warnings are, are warnings are a good thing and thank you there's a uh, Amen. And uh, God teaches us uh, how to live. Uh, he teaches us how to love. He teaches us how to die. He teaches us everything through this. And it's our responsibility to, to know those things and learn them. And a lot of the, the messages that come from the scripture, uh, from the accounts, are warnings. When I think I was thinking about warnings uh, being a good thing, I remember when I was about 17 years old, I bought my first car. Uh, I was up in Fairfax, Virginia. I bought a Harley Kia convertible. I thought it was a piece of junk. 
Amen. So when we look at this man, we see that this man trusted God. He's just an unnamed man. God knows his name. But as far as we don't know who he is, but, but uh, he had courage to do what God wanted him to do. And in chapter 13, beginning in verse 1, we see in the whole there came a man of God. What a title. There came a man of God out of 
And so now he has to try to figure out how to make this up. He needs to become uh, the, the king in control again. And so now he is going to make an offer to this prophet who has done something for him. The prophet has done something for him, so now he has to do something for the prophet. And so this is, he's compelled to do this. This is not his nature. But this is the nature of the culture. So we find a present, a gift is offered because the prophet prayed for him. And in verse 7, and the king said unto the man of God, come home with me. Now isn't that quite different from take hold on him? <laughs> no, he's saying, come home with me. And refresh thyself. Oh, how kind we become. Mm -hmm. And I will give thee a reward. <clears throat> See, he's trying to get the prophet into the position of owing him again. Right. And so now, the prophet and the man of God said unto the king, If thou wilt give me half thine house, I will not go with thee. Slap him again. Neither will I eat bread nor drink water in this place. For so it was charged me, there are those words again, by the word of the Lord, saying, Eat no bread nor drink water, nor turn again by the same way that thou camest. And so we see here he's making his excuses to the king. He may have said, I would love to, but God told me not to. Yes. And so he's, he's explaining to the king why he cannot accept the gift, why he cannot accept the present. And he tells him, God forbade me to do this, and now I need to go home. Now something that's important for us to realize here, and that to notice, is that six times in these verses, this prophet of God has been directed by the word of God. Everything that he has done up to this point has been in obedience to the instructions of God. When we look at this man, we see a man that had conviction that God's word should be obeyed. And he had the courage to put his conviction into action. This was a good guy. Well. He had courage and was going to trust God. Now, the warning sign. Those other things had warnings in them, but they weren't the warning sign. Now we get to it. The lesson for us, the prophet's sin through disobedience. Yeah, yeah. This man, this man, this good man, this godly man, this obedient man. The prophet's sin through disobedience. In verse 10, we see the conversation. So he went another way and returned not by the way that he came to Bethel. Now there dwelt an old in Bethel. And his sons came and told him all the words that the man of God had done that day in Bethel, the words which he had spoken unto the king. Then they told also to their father. And their father said unto them, What well, way went he? For his sons had seen what way the man of God went, which came from Judah. And he said unto his sons, Saddle me the ass. So they saddled him, the ass, and he rode thereon, and he went after the man of God, and found him sitting under an oak. And he said unto him, Art thou the man of God that camest from Judah? And he said, I am. Then he said, Come home with me, and eat bread. And 
And they came and told him in the city where the old prophet dwelt. And when the prophet that brought him back from the way heard thereof, he said, it is the man of God. What is that saying? Who was disobedient unto the word of God? Say, but Lord, he lied to me. And God said, you should have listened to me. You should have listened to me. You should have hearkened to my word. Yes, sir. Yes. Titus tells us that we serve a God that cannot lie. Amen. And our confidence has to be in him and completely holy, solely in him. Amen. And we need to realize that mankind will tell us anything and everything. And they will blatantly, brazenly contradict the word of God and dare us to disbelieve them. They tell us that we're foolish to disbelieve them. That what kind of person believes that God created everything in six literal days? How can you believe that? And we looked him in the eye and said, because God said it. That's right. Yeah. Amen. And he settled it. Yeah. How can you know when you die and you're going to heaven? How can you believe that there's an afterlife? Because Jesus said, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. Amen. And I'm coming back. We believe God. And this young man, this young prophet, he believed God to a point. No, we need to believe God all the way. We need to understand and let this be a, a warning sign in, in our lives to hold to the word of God, know the word of God, believe the word of God, and refuse to be turned from the word of God. Yes. We are saved by the living word. We are taught by the written word. We need to hold to him. My son and I, Stephen, we were talking about this old prophet. Said, why in the world would he have done something like that? And we just kind of thinking, and I said, well, I think it's guilt. I think he did it out of guilt. You know, guilt moves people to do evil things. Yes, sir. Amen. It really does. You know, we, uh, we as believers, we as Christians, uh, when we do something wrong, when we have offended those that love us and we get guilty, we can either get right or we get angry. All right. You know, uh, and we start acting weird. Why? Because of guilt. Yeah. Why did this old man act like this? Maybe because he realized after he heard what this young man should have said, what this young man had done in his town, maybe he thought, I should have been the one to do that. I should have been the one as a prophet of God. I should have been down there telling the king, you're wrong. I should have been down there telling the people, don't believe in these golden calves. I should have been down there doing what, uh, what is right in God's eyes. But I didn't. I was hiding back here in my house behind these walls. No courage. Cowardice. Guilty. Amen. And when this young man 
And then when we see them, they, we immediately understand them and 